touch me in the pouring rain and the moment that you wander far from me i want to feel you in my arms again and you come to me on a summer breeze keep me warm in your love then you softly leave and it's me you need to share how deep is your love is your Hello? Michael, am I all set? Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning across all the different time zones. Um, we are an amazing group of a lot of humans on this Zoom this evening um, for the purpose of celebrating and honoring Deborah's legacy. Um, on behalf of Material Girls and Friends, I'd like to thank everyone for being a part of this and for the ongoing expressions of love and support. Um, to begin the program, Material Girls would like to share some words in prelude to a video. Um, 
in my own words, I met Deborah in 2013 at VCU's summer studio program, and we became friends, but didn't really become close until we met again in Iceland in 2015, when I rented a car and drove however many hours to pick her up from a residency in Husavik, a tiny fishing town on the northern coast, and then spent the next couple of days always driving into gradients of light, witnessing moments where the sun and moon skimmed the horizon at the same time getting almost lost, eating smoke locks out of the back seat, sleeping in the front seats, running around naked at Daddy Foss, Europe's largest waterfall at four o'clock in the morning. I never paid that speeding ticket that I got for driving 100 miles an hour so we could see just one more natural wonder and still make it back to Reykjavik in time. Looking back to the black sand beaches, jagged, standalone rock formations, stranded on the shore, and sulfur fields that spit up earth's guts, we intrinsically intertwined ourselves through the experience. In some ways, Material Girls was born from Iceland's primordial landscape, rays unrelentingly attracted to a core. On Earth, you were a truly inspiring, loving, boldly passionate person who made amazingly vibrant and vibrating works that crystallized your energy incarnate. And now to Cam. Sorry, Hill. <laughs> um, I met Deborah in the spring of 2016 after already knowing about her and knowing about her work especially through the University of Texas kids which Grace Lee and Rachel will elaborate on and getting to see her work in Texas but when I went up to Providence to visit RISD I got to stay at her house and she was my host and I got in at two in the morning and she sat down on the bed with me and just talked till 5 a.m. and then I had to go interview for grad school um, and it became in a weird way it like she became my home in New York um, I never lived in New York I've lived in Texas and LA but every time I'm there Garden Street was my home and when I think of New York I think of that place as my home and she started it from the beginning. So, yeah. And now Rachel. <laughs> so I met Deborah in 2015 when our grad programs organized a series of exchange shows between Austin and Providence. We put together four big sprawling cross country shows across two years and I remember being really stoked to have found this group of super sculpture nerds in her RISD cohort. And I was especially taken with Deborah's boundless energy and enthusiasm. While she was in Austin for one of the openings, I remember my household being particularly impressed with one of her dance moves. <laughs> she would bend over and slap the ground with full force before snapping back up again to continue dancing. She also, I remember, did it when we were in Providence at karaoke on top of a table that was covered in spilled drinks and it was particularly dramatic. Yes. <laughs> uh, I feel so lucky to have been able to continue organizing big, ambitious projects with Dev and the rest of the girls. Deborah's relentlessly positive attitude, attitude and endless energy powered us through what often felt like truly insurmountable tasks. And working with her and the other girls taught me that we really could accomplish whatever we wanted together. I'm forever grateful to Dev for helping me find this group of women and showing us how powerful we are together. Yeah. Um, so next is Claire. Hi. Um, in 2016, Deborah moved in with me and my roommate Caroline at 35 Garden Street in Bushwick. We knew each other from beforehand in undergrad at Oberlin, but we weren't super close. In fact, I was a little bit skeptical of her because she was so like happy and positive, but eventually her good nature overrode my cynicism and we became friends. 
Uh, she kept bugging me to invite her over to my studio, and finally I relented. Uh, when she came over and saw my work, she invited me to be in a show with a bunch of women uh, in a fledgling collective called Material Girls. Um, as it turned out, that casual offer changed my whole life. Um, one of Devra's greatest talents was her ability to bring people together. Our collective is a testament to that. Devra brought us together a mix of friends, acquaintances, and perfect strangers, and we absolutely fell in love with each other. For that reason, we wanted to bring you all together tonight to remember her as an artist, but also as a generous collaborator, a champion of her friend and peers, and as a community maker. Uh, tonight, FYI, we're gonna be handing over the hosting duties to Matt, who's Deborah's partner in love and life, and truly her perfect match in terms of generosity, warmth, and vision, and all around good vibes. We love Matt, and if you don't know him yet, you will too. Now to Grace Lee. Hey y'all. So I also first met Dev um, at the same exchange show that Rachel mentioned when I was in grad school with Rach at UT Austin. And I didn't know her well then, but I do remember just how hard all the RISD crew threw down. They really, they really partied hard. It was impressive and I could not keep up at the time. Um, and so after that, I moved to Thailand and the first year and a half of our collaboration with Material Girls, I hadn't actually met more than half of the ladies in person. And I remember the kind of like boundless energy and somehow ability to connect that Dev had on um, digital channels. And those of you who, who knew her digitally knew that that was absolutely true. Um, Devra was the ultimate documentarian. She was our Instagram queen. She never missed a chance to share pictures and videos of Material Girls work and play together. For those of you who followed her, you already know the constant and gloriously energetic tone of her stories, ranging from studio updates to hanging out with friends, a lot of Material Girls content. Um, also, many, many candid videos of Matt, <laughs> to harmonizing in her car while singing and sitting in Brooklyn traffic. Devra built a beautiful archive of our time together from the very, very beginning, and always made sure to somehow capture the most important moments while staying present in them herself. And so what we have now is this amazing collection to laugh with, full of cats dancing and singing and vaping and laughing and sunsets and water and so much more. So with that, we have a compilation of our choicest dev moments to share with you. And I have to find it.
He's like a chicken piece or something. Hey, grab his legs like that. Hey, fancy man. Look, he got fur. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Can't he loves me, he loves you no matter what you do, he's never gonna be Squishy ball toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're gonna talk about. Yeah. 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 She's all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wow. I, that was actually amazing. Um, I, I feel like I've already laughed and cried like 10 times. <laughs> um, and, and I'm hoping that you can hear me right now. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I think, Michael, if you want to jump over to my screen. Or maybe we can, hey, hey, okay. Hello, everyone. Hey, I'm Matt. Um, and uh, as, as Claire mentioned, uh, Deborah and I, uh, well, I'll just say that Deborah and I met in the summer of 2017 uh, and, and very quickly fell deeply in love and spent like a ridiculous amount of time together. And, uh, you know, we bonded over, over talking about our communities and our processes and, and like our favorite landscapes. And uh, I, I feel like I always start this with many of you probably recognize me from Deborah's Instagram. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, she would always say that we, we met by uh, uh, running into each other on the internet. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm here to, I'm, I'm the MC for the evening uh, and I'm gonna kind of uh, guide us through uh, the flow of what this uh, program is going to be. Uh, and I'm really amazed to see literally like over 200 people here uh, right now. And uh, it's, it's just really amazing. I'm, I'm so glad you're all here. Thanks for being here. And, and it means a lot to, to all of us. Uh, so we, we have 20 presenters kind of speaking and sharing uh, throughout the night. And it should take us to about 9 o'clock, a little later. Uh, we're going to do our best to keep this as smooth as possible, but we're all still learning. So, uh, you know, Zoom, Zoom is its own uh, beast. Uh, and one last thing I'll say is that I've been thinking a lot about how our collective memory of Devra is, is been rising in volume a lot uh, over the last few weeks. And, and it's been resonating her spirit in this way that, that, that's really beautiful and magnificent. And uh, it feels really loud to me. Uh, and I'm looking forward to just blasting it, blasting her energy with you for the next few hours. Um, so does everyone have like, if you want the virtual backgrounds, you already know about that, so that's happening. Um, we're gonna have a couple of breaks throughout, we have two breaks throughout the program. And uh, you know you can refill your glass, uh, you know step outside or roll yourself something, whatever you got to do. And I'll pop in a few times. Uh, so uh, you know, yeah, cut your cheese, put on your hydrating face mask, uh, grab a glass of your favorite funk, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to Allison Karasik. Allison, take it away. Thanks, Matt. Um, thanks to everyone who's here. It's so good to see so many of your beautiful faces and your names. Um, just to quickly state who I am, I, well, Deborah and my mom actually met a few decades ago at Eisner Camp, and then Deborah and I met there for the first time, and then we reunited, and I would say truly fell in love at Oberlin as two redheaded, nose ringed art majors. Um, who like to talk about Jewish summer camp, sleepaway camp. Um, and I'm gonna read you guys a letter that I wrote to Dever recently. So I probably will do a screen share at the end, not in the middle. Um, here it goes. Devra, every morning since July 1, 2019 has been the same. I wake up and you are the first thing I think about. I wake up and I remember. I still sometimes question it, hoping it's been one long ruinous dream and maybe we're finally awake now. How could the sun, how could the earth continue making its way around the sun without you here to love it? I realized recently that something I do every day is say your name. I think Deborah has become my favorite word. Waking up in a world without you is like no pain I've ever felt before but there's also a feeling of wonder. That someone so full of light, so driven, so spectacular, so unique even exists. Even more so that she chose me as her friend, loved me fiercely, 
convinced me that I didn't deserve judgment, allowed me to laugh until my stomach, or made me laugh until my stomach hurt, led me to see new colors, allowed me to experience the passage of light through sculpture in a way I never did before. I learned so many things from you and I am still learning every day. One of my favorite things that you did was be yourself. Like no one I've ever met, unafraid of what other people thought, embracing the weird, the wonky, the beautiful, all the same. You were and are so real, so marvelous, so unfailingly and remarkably Devra. Channeling you has led me through a year of pushing myself. Even if the ambition seemed out of reach, even if I was afraid of opening up and getting hurt, I think of you and I know I should just do it. I think of you and I know I, and I, know I don't need to live in fear of making mistakes, of what people think, of being vulnerable. Here it goes. I love you so much that the amount I miss you when I allow myself to fully feel it empties me like a hole eating away at the insides of my body. The physical sensation of a void in process. When I really feel it, I visualize it too, and it resembles a well. It's not an abyss, even if there is no end in sight. The thing about a well is that one side of it the part we fear falling into is open. There is air inside and it's damp, but sometimes that air allows you breath. I've made some amazing new friends this year, like all of whom who are here, hi guys, um, and have gotten closer to several others out of a mutual need to feel closer to you, to tell Deborah stories, to wrap our heads around why, how, why. This photo, which I'll show you at the end, um, was taken during our last studio visit. The night we started hatching plans for an exhibition of your work that I would one day curate. Over the last year, I've spent a lot of time in this space longing for you, sometimes slipping into the fantasy that maybe you're just out getting us beers and we'll actually be back again soon. Mom's home, you'd announce often singing these words when opening a door with friends on the other side. Over the last year, I've worked on organizing your studio and estate with your family and a few friends. My main role has been to scan your notebooks. When I met with an archivist at the Rauschenberg Foundation, she told me that good archivists don't read while they work. I'm a bad archivist. I read your notes from the classes we took together at Oberlin, the presentations you practiced in front of me, your mom's peach pie recipe. I learned that Dever Freelander was not only an artist, but a poet. I fell even more in love with you, and I had no idea that was possible. Over the last year, I've become defensive about you in relation to death. Death has nothing to do with you. You remain one of the most life-affirming people this earth has ever and will ever know. It's made me think a lot about art history's tendency to frame young female artists through the lens of a tragic end. Anna Mendiata, Eva Hesse, Teresa Hak Young Cha. It's insane that I could continue this list easily if I wanted to. Realizing this has furthered my interest in combating the misogyny of art history in addition to the art world, which we spoke about often that artwork made by young, brilliant, radical women is supposedly most interesting when explored through a lack of agency, through the looking glass of their silence, through the voicelessness of their not being here. I know it sounds dark, but I know if you were beside me, you'd still be listening, putting one hand on my shoulder and refilling my glass of orange wine with the other. encouraging me and challenging me, carving out a realm for us to glide between the personal and the political, making me feel at home and at ease to always hold these two things together. Matt and I often say this thing, WWDD, what would Dever do? It has guided me to some great decisions over the last year, even if it's been the most challenging year yet. Mostly because I'm not afraid but I do miss you terribly. 
And like the gaping hole, there is no closure, no end for this pain in sight. I've realized even on mornings when I wake up and try to convince myself that this is all a dream, missing you as part of who I am now. But so are the things you've taught me, the joy you give and the love we share. At least that can't be taken away from any of us. Thanks guys. This is called How She Became Ice. A clear inverted mountain floating above the horizon. For historians, the present had lost itself over time. There were no shadows, echoes of no surface, nobody left to be beautiful. The ghost of what was to come singed. The last frayed edges of what she knew had wilted. Her gelid fingers traced the tapering glaciers marbled with mud. What had survived was ancient. She found fossils of ferns stamped in stones from way back when. Her own landscape had once been opposite like that. The ice moved through her for a few hours. A mineral messenger. She felt like a fjord. She'd take kidneys over the North Star and water over watches. She'd take time. She'd take misdirection, indecision, intuition. Suspension over disbelief. She'd take the third person over you. Or the sun and the moon at rest. Not rest like stillness, but the kind of rest in music. A string held taut an interval with the pedal down. She'd take the confusion, the hysteria of light, the heft of its lurch sideways. The ice fortified her. Fronds of frost stung, spikes spreading like cables pushing signals through. Antony attuned at frazzled frequencies. She could hear the grating ring of silence, the screech of crystals forming, futures foreseen, the tangle of tubular seaweed, the rinse of starfish with no hearts and doubled the hunger. The opacity leaked out of her blood and her bones. Spectral. All the heat had dispersed. Her broken chronometer preserved in ice, still recording two types of error. The imperfection of the image exposed and the great distance it represented. When examined with a telescope, it proved to be our distance from one another. Dead reckoning, adjusting for parallax, Distances were deceptive due to atmospheric clarity and the absence of trees. The gloop of algae, the nets and straws and long distance love letters congealed the ocean into a jungle. Gelatinous gossip. Quartz, astral, petrified. Phosphorescent flares. She went inside the boat, anchored never too close to shore. She was thawing, dripping after life. Still, a thin haze persisted. She was translucent. That was really beautiful what we just saw. Um, hey, uh, I'm Gregory Wickstrom. Uh, I met Deborah 
at college, um, we immediately hit it off. She um, and I have a lot in common. Uh, both loved weed, um, didn't like showering. Both raised more Jewish than average. Um, and um, both have like semi-perfect pitch. And so like, like realized we could like harmonize with each other easily and, and did often uh, just sort of for fun. And um, uh, yeah, you know, like college was college was great and we kept in touch after and like, and um, we could hang out a lot and we, we collaborated on a few projects. This is one of our, um, you know, works. Um, she was always pushing me to be more of an artist and I was always trying to push her to be um, more of um, a, a more of like a, a capitalist <laughs> and like we were like we were trying to like fuse those those two things that was like what the conversation was about but the um, but what the conversation was like was like always always about like what we always got back to was that the thing that sucked most about being a visual artist um, is that you're not a musician you're not a professional musician which is just way cooler and way better um uh and you know we were both just these like ra like randomly somewhat musical people doing art who longed for to have more music in our lives um so like um the last time we worked together at her studio um she was really into ELO at the time, and I, I was also, I've always kind of been into ELO, um, and we just, they, they're always like five harmonies on every vocal track, on ELO tracks, and um, so, yeah, like, so we, when, on our drive home, uh, we played the same song over and over again, and tried to, like, learn the parts, and I think about that a lot, uh, so I want to play that song. Out of practice, so I see the lonely road that leads so far away. I see the distant light then behind the day. Searching for can never be the same. What's the difference? Cause they say what's in a name, and I see you in midnight blue.
offering you and can't you see that it's meant to be and can't you feel the words that i'm saying to you and can't you believe like i believe it's only what in it is true that i see you in Thanks guys. Thanks Material Girls for putting this together. I love you all very much. Wow. Being bad at Zoom. Wow, Gregory, thank you. That was beautiful. Um, wow, yeah. Listen to a lot of ELO in the car <laughs> for a while there, so it's nice to hear some again. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a short introduction for Ash. Oh, she has a uh, a video that we're going to share next and uh, I, I know Ash a little bit uh, from through Devra and they met at the uh, Arctic Circle residency uh, in 2017 and this is a, uh, a video that she made kind of after after spending a lot of time with Devra and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Grace Lee to share that.
Hello, everyone. Uh, great to see so many of you. This is really lovely. My name is Ben Saratan. I'm actually sitting next to Matt. Um, we're roommates for a few more days. Um, I'll keep it brief, but I just wanted to, um, I guess, Gregory, thank you for that lovely performance. I think Devra's musical world was really such a deep one and maybe one that not everyone knows. And I had the great fortune to play with Devra in a few contexts and sing with Devra. Um, I performed some music with her at closing reception of hers. Um, we did karaoke at an opening infamously one time. And she played some of my songs. She played in a band called Adeline Hotel. Um, she played a few gigs with that band. We made a record together that she sings on that is very lovely. And um, yeah, singing with Devra was, was really one of the joys of my life. Um, I was just trying to think about how to introduce this, but uh, one time Dev and I were in a cab going over to this like video gig we were doing, like re recording a live session. And she turns to me and goes, hey, I just wanted to say thanks for literally making my dreams come true. And I want you to know that I talked about this in therapy this week, um, which was like such a typically great thing of her to say. And um, yeah, I was just thinking about how she made everything feel like a dream come true. Like, you know, going to the bodega with her was like the most fun thing in the world. Um, and I think that's a really special quality. And she was also like, uh, the greatest harmony singer I've ever encountered in my life. And uh, yeah, that can't be stated enough. So I'm, I've just, I've gotten a, it's just like a voice memo recording of us playing together in this very living room. And um, yeah, it's great. It's just her and I playing and singing together. She's playing ukulele and improvising harmonies. This is like the second time she's ever sung a song. It ended up being on a, a recent record I just put out. And then there's a nice little surprise at the end. That's very typically Deborah. So yeah, that's it. Just a little audio of us singing together. And I hope uh, you can feel how it was a dream come true to sing with her. And please enjoy. You do the whole thing? Yeah, I think so. Cool. <laughs> Be the lightning that cracks my heart. 
so good. Um, wow, yeah, it's really beautiful to hear that recording and also just to hear Deborah say sick like that makes me feel <laughs> really happy. Um, okay, we're gonna, hey, so thanks to everyone that's done so far. We're gonna take a, like a three minute break for you to do what you need to do, refill your glass, go stand outside, like take a break, whatever you have to do. And then we're gonna come back with um, another group of presenters so uh, just just take a minute and and you don't have to like go anywhere and we'll, we'll we'll keep going through. It's really great that you're all here. Thanks so much. It means a lot. Okay, so be back in a bit. Oh, oh man, that was so nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, you might be able to hear me now. I think most of you can hear me. Most of you can hear me. Most of you. Oh, yeah, I think that's working. Great. Wow. Okay, I hope everyone had a nice break. I was wondering, I don't have a big screen up, but I really do like, I kind of want to see everyone that has cats. Can we see some <laughs> cats on screen cats in while the people chat. are coming back? Can we see some cats, please? I, I, hold on, I need to like find a way to actually see the cats here. We have one, we have cat, one cat that really does not want to be. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine, you know. <laughs> She's camera shy, but here's... All right, we got, we got a cat, we got, Shane has got a cat, yeah. We got a dog, we got a dog. We got, we got some dogs, yeah, cat, yes. Oh my God, we got, we got cats, we got, cats. We got dogs. <laughs> Let's see your animals. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> grid view, or is that? Oh. Right. This is wonderful. Okay. Oh my God, BB. Oh my God. I'm like swiping through. It's so good to see you all. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, we're back. Uh, I'm going to keep this one super brief. Uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep going. And it's so great to see all of our fanciful pups and animals. Uh, the next up is uh, we're going to talk. Oh, what did I want to say? Oh, I, would, I did want to say one thing which is that, uh, oh, I'll leave it for the next one. Okay, I love you all. Uh, our next presenter is Lauren Powell. Take it away, Hi. Lauren. Um, okay, I, sorry, I'm not good at this. Share screen. I'm just gonna read something um, about Deborah while I share some photos and images. So if you can just direct your attention at the photos and images and not me, that would be <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, Deborah was a vibrant beam of light in an often dark world. She saw the destruction the human race was responsible for and used her work to showcase Earth's natural beauty, highlighting and exaggerating it so this beauty could be recognized by all, even those who might not see it right away. The kindness, warmth, openness, and generosity she showed me helped me through a darker time in my adult existence. She showed me how to love and how to celebrate again. She showed me the incredible importance of love and joy. With these two elements in your daily life, you can literally move mountains or icebergs. I'll forever think of Deborah every time I look at a sunrise, a sunset, a mountain range, or even ice. I met Deborah at a surfer blood show at the Music Hall of Williamsburg in the green room when I showed up to see some friends play. <laughs> uh, she captured this moment on her Instagram uh, and I found it recently. Um, I did not know anyone there except for the band and Deborah quickly opened her friends to me and took me up to the balcony to dance. The next night we became actual friends on the rooftop of her studio over a beer and a sunset. This was the first time I stepped into a part of the art world beyond viewing exhibitions at museums. The possibilities and passion she shared with me were like a drug. Her warmth drew me in immediately and I felt as if I had known her my entire life. Through our short friendship, we danced many more times at many more venues, perhaps the moments in the last few years of my life that I have felt the most free, thanks to her spirit. I can always count on her to be my plus one. As I reflected last summer, I realized that I would not be following my dreams or attempting to work with artists on any level at all if Deborah wouldn't have single-handedly opened the door to this world for me. Deborah was the first artist to invite me into their studio. I started my art collection with a piece that I purchased from Deborah. Oh, sorry. Um, she was also the first artist to generously allow me to help her with an important project, changing my life with her openness. The simple act of suiting up in these coveralls, wearing respirators, mixing chemicals, handing the buckets to her, while she created her beautiful sculpture at Socrates Sculpture Park, then sitting on a table and eating pizza so casually after forever changed my life. Here she was taking on the biggest project of her career, 
creating work at a scale she had never attempted and she trusted me to assist her. This act, so simple yet so Debra, helped to shape the perspectives I hold today. Her confidence in herself and her ideas will, inspire, will always inspire me and guide me. After that, I started to build my own projects and figure out ways to work with artists. Debra showed up to everything that I did, no matter how big or how small, and I tried my best to do the same for her. She felt like a sister and we could always count on each other as cheerleaders for our work. She introduced me to several artists I've worked with both directly and indirectly, and she opened my eyes to the importance of community. I feel so lucky to be, have been included in her community for the short amount of time. And the funny thing is, even now that she's gone, my community continues to grow as a direct result of her. The connections remain always. I have lifelong friends, thanks to Debra. Um, and then the last thing is that Debra shared her warmth and joy with so many so effortlessly. I recently found this video of my cat Fiona and her work. And I found her response to the video that it was all she wanted. And I hope she has all she wants now. I miss her a lot. I know everyone does too. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> wow, thank you, Lauren. That's, oh, I feel uh, a lot <laughs> uh, from that. Uh, it's really amazing. And thanks for sharing those images. It's really wonderful. Um, I'm going to, I'm now, taking a tiny step out of MC role, and I'm gonna share something uh, that I made this last week, uh, very, as a response to kind of like how I was feeling, and, and I'll say that um, the last few weeks, I, I found myself really comforted by Dev's uh, comedic genius. Uh, I think I really needed that <laughs> to help me through, uh, and I'm so glad, I mean, it's just everywhere. I went through a bunch of our old text threads and I was just like literally laughing out loud at like insane, like specifically like, like calling dried apricots, like probiotic poop fruits, like this kind of sh shit just like kills me. And it was like, it's just like the thread is just like ongoing, like comedy, it's insane. Um, so I've made this video of Devraisms to share uh, with you all. And uh, I, I, I encourage you, you can put it in at the end, but also now, uh, you know, if you think of any Debraisms while this is happening, just put them in the chat. Let's share some extras. Um, but Grace Lee is going to share this video for you.
I met Dev in 2014. It was a sort of pivotal time in my life because I was transitioning from um, one major project to another and Dev was part of this new team that I was going to start to build and she was the first person on that team that I, I hired and she was right off of um, leaving undergrad and so this was her first job uh, or, or so, so, like first job after graduating as a professional. And so <clears throat> I remember our first couple of days, I didn't have a lot for her to do. And I was like, oh my God, I've hired this person. Now I need her to uh, like trying to find stuff to do because I was so used to doing so many things on my own. Um, but it was a special time because it was the start of my first furniture collection. And so it was all new work, all new techniques, and, and Dev was there for all of that. She was the first person to problem solve with me, to, you know, start to become the, the expert, you know, like weeks into the job, and she was the expert on, on making some of these objects. And then she had funny ways of measuring. She would stick her hand inside of a bucket and it was like, yeah, it, the, the powder's up to here. That's, that's the right amount. And so <laughs> it was the first time that I had had someone in my studio that um, we had a professional friendship and a, it was a professional friendship where I felt like, you know, I trusted her with things. We had long conversations about her career and uh, my career. And I remember when <laughs> she had only worked for me for, um, I guess it was about a half a year or so, but we had formed a really great bond. And I remember when she told me that she was going to graduate school, which I was extremely happy about. I was like, this is gonna be great for you. But there, it was kind of bittersweet for me because we had launched this collection of furniture, which to this day is, is, is something that most people recognize my work for today. And, um, and she was in there right at the beginning with me, making all of those pieces, figuring them out. And um, it was a special time and I, so when she told me she was going to grad school, we were, I was sad. I remember being sad. I was like, shit, I'll never, I'll probably never have another person to work for me in the same way. And uh, so I stayed in touch with her and I tried following her career all the way through. And we've had some special times, you know, when she did her Socrates project, I went out and we had this special day where she showed me around and then we went and um, we had a, a lunch together and she was telling me about all the dreams she had and she was a special person and she sorely missed and she'll always have a special place in my heart and in my studio and in the history of my um of my life and so i i hope that uh i cherish those memories so I was just going to say, we want to say that she was a special person in my life and that she was a special person in general. Um, there we go. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jess Wilcox, a curator at Socrates Sculpture Park. And I had the privilege to work with Devra on the production of her first public artwork in 2017. Um, when I was asked to talk about Devra and Fluorescent Sunrise, um, my first thought was that I could never tell the story um, as eloquently and animatedly as she would. But then I remembered how well she documented the process. Um, so I'm using this 
story telling the rise of fluorescent sunrise using mainly her words and images from Instagram, which is pretty appropriate um, considering the digital sublime was one of the inspirations um, of the piece. So this is where it all began um, when I received the proposal for the open call for the fellowship. And I was delighted that the other jurors were as enthusiastic about it as I was. Um, Deborah was one of the first artists to occupy the studio. Um, she was there, you know, every day. She was thorough, she made models. Um, this one, which became a signature image for the show. She did stress tests, and I'll just read this caption. DIY tensile and flexure testing with at Nick Missile Studio at Socrates Park today. Turns out this resin can hold 80 pounds of weight without breaking. It flexes up to 10 inches though, LOL. Uh, so we remember this, this story. Uh, Deborah took over our education uh, tent for the long and laborious process um, that it took to make this work, which first began with waxing uh, the mold for the piece four times each, each uh, side. Then there was pouring. Um, there was smoothing of the resin, mixing of the pigment and resin, and more pouring. Um, I'll read this caption. Come help me pour resin, uh, chemist emoji. Each batch takes about one hour to pour and I need extra hands to help me get it all into the mold before the resin starts curing on itself. Um, and I just like to say I love this image um, because it has the pink reflection in the white tent, um, which I feel like is a visual metaphor for Devra and her vibrant and radiant personality. Um, for those of you who she did recruit and came to the tent, um, you'll remember the intense heat of the summer, which was compounded by the greenhouse effects, um, as well as the safety suit and res respirator. Um, Deborah adapted to the harsh conditions by coming in early in the morning, leaving during the midday heat and uh, returning at sunset for the cooled off air. Uh, caption, check out the Fa Socrates Facebook Live for a video of me talking about my newest project while on three hours of sleep because I poured my previous layer of resin at 4.20 a.m. Um, and here's a giddy grin during the demolding process. Because of the weight, we had to bring out the boom truck to lift it. Um, caption, watching my baby fly during install on Monday. Um, and again, like Matt said, you know, this was her baby, it was her daughter, uh, which you'll hear her refer to. Um, this uh, I'll play as a video because it's pretty epic. Um, it was her, I think, most liked Instagram, most popular, with 1,666 views. Caption, work hard with friends and often. Thanks, Nick Missile Studio, for saving my sculpture life 100% of the time. Um, and one of the comments, it says, wait, I don't understand. Um, and just, uh, for those of you who, who might also not understand what's going on here, um, this was um, a fix to a sculpture emergency, um, which was uh, that despite, you know, uh, all of Deborah's efforts and testing, uh, the piece started to, um, to essentially melt in the sun a bit. Um, but of course, Deborah would not have her son sag. So she uh, started this midnight uh, fiberglassing session to hold the sun upwards. Um, and she was there all night, uh, the night before taking off to her Arctic Circle residency. Um, and this was an image from the opening, which she sadly missed because she was in the Arctic Circle. 
Um, but it was really lovely showing how she essentially replicated um, her proposal, um, enchanting the public. And of course, Deborah was not one of those artists who installs their work and leaves it. She checks back often. Caption, reunited with my baby for the first time since leaving for the Arctic last month. Uh, she was just as interested in its aging process as its creation process. Uh, caption, quick visit to Socrates Park to say hi to my big baby girl. Fall is treating her well. I can't wait to see her in the snow. And she did see her in the snow. Caption, paid my girl a post-cyclone visit. Checked out the colored shadow she produces on the snowbank. I've always wondered if my resin pieces would project fluorescent shadows onto the snow if they hit the sun correctly. Now I know. And she recognized the artistry of natural forces. One more shot of my frozen sun child before I head to Colorado. Crazy pressure ridge happening on the front side of the piece. Um, and her, her advertising uh, the a performance for the closing reception, an image of that performance. And then uh, one of uh, my favorite videos, um, and you'll see echoes um, of, of her um, Arctic Circle um, video in this piece. So nice. Yeah. Um, when destroying her work, she found pleasure in beauty. Caption, a fourth of the way through deinstall, I kind of fell in love with this little Pac-Man moment when the skyline was revealed. And of course, deinstallation wasn't the end for Deborah. Caption, after deinstalling fluorescent sunrise from Socrates Park, I couldn't bear to throw out any of the pieces. So I loved several buckets of resin shards, plus some larger 60 pound slabs back to my studio for safekeeping. Hashtag sculptor hoarder problems. I love these pieces though, both as fragments of my first large scale sculpture and as little iceberg mountains on their own right. And of course, she turned it into um, an exhibition, uh, Fluorescent Fragments, at Way Cooler Gallery, um, asking everyone to find their soulmate shard. Um, and just to end, um, I wanted to share some photos of, uh, that the public took of her artwork, because I believe everyone here is familiar and intimate with uh, Deborah, but I also I also wanted everyone to know um, how much her artwork touched not only people she knew, um, but strangers as well. Um, and i just like to say for everyone at Socrates, shine on, Deborah. Uh, thank you for your beautiful light. The first time I encountered Deborah's work was at Socrates Sculpture Park. I was just wandering through and was really taken aback by her fluorescent sunrise piece that was there. Um, it almost appeared digital in the landscape. It was really, um, really drew me in. And I, it was a favorite piece of mine while I was there. And about a year later, a mutual friend of mine and Deborah's introduced me to Deborah's work, or reintroduced me rather, to her work, and I realized it was that same sculpture I had seen a year previously. And so I started following her on Instagram and really got um, 
really engaged in her work and how unique and um, really stunning it was. And so later went on to meet Deborah, and she introduced me to the macrobiotic diet and orange wine. Um, that was a, a fun dinner over which we connected. And um, my I was a director at Circa Gallery, and we ended up representing Deborah on our, our roster of artists. Um, and from there, we began planning a exhibition of her work. Um, when I was in New York for a spring break art show, when Grace Lee Lawrence and Deborah's um, eventual artifact sculpture was unveiled, we began planning her solo exhibition at Circa, which at the time we were in between spaces and I wanted her to be the headline of the first solo show in our new space once we got it. So we got that new space in May or June of 2019 and began really starting to solidify what was going to be in that show. Deborah was planning a new body of work that um, at her residencies, multiple residencies over that summer that she um, was going to make for this show. And um, later we with the help of Deborah's family and the Material Girls and other collaborators, we were able to make the show still possible in the fall of 2019. So her show was still our first solo show in that new space. Um, and it was called Far Away Deep Inside, named after her video, um, video piece from up in the Arctic Circle that she recorded set to Matt Evans' music, and it really um, was a stunning exhibition that highlighted uh, the vastness of her work and um, was able to sample a few bits from her very prolific body of work um, to show a real well-rounded example of her work and how great it was all together in one space. It really um, really pulled it together and allowed you to see her work in a way that it's truly meant to be experienced with um, all these different series coming together and really interconnecting. My name is Sarah Hamill, and I was grateful to have the chance to teach Devra at Oberlin College before she graduated in the spring of 2012. My course was about the history and aesthetics and theory of sculpture, and like any true Oberlin College student, Devra brought a probing curiosity and total commitment to the course. She spoke up in discussion, engaging others with her characteristic insight and care and directness and above all, her sense of humor. She was also such a detail-oriented and probing writer, unearthing the nuances of a particular representational problem. For her final paper, she wrote about Dan Flavin's Untitled to Ellen Johnson fondly in Oberlin's Allen Memorial Art Museum. Rereading her paper recently, I was struck by how deeply and carefully she thought about sculptures their material and pictorial paradoxes, how they could be both things in the world and representations, and how that tension was unresolved. This was a sophisticated argument, and Devra put this so eloquently in the final sentence of her paper, where she wrote that Flavin's sculpture, quote, is sustained by the energy these questions produce. And because they will never be answered to a satisfactory extent, the fluorescent installation will continue to bewilder and mystify audiences with its vague, dichotomous, paradoxical glow. I will also never forget Devra's senior studio project with its casts of found rocks scattered on the floor amidst mirrors and granular bits of material and other found objects, sometimes painted. I found the casts of rocks enticing Brought into the gallery, they were simulacrum for our material world. 
the textures on the the textures of materials on the floor too with their bright colors oppose the smooth rocks asking us to envision different surfaces and spaces to move between the paradox of tactility and illusion that she found in Flavin's work. Her installation haunted me, and I continued to think of it many times over the ensuing years. For in this sculpture, and in many of the ones that she made since graduating from Oberlin, Dever posed an alternative bodily world for us to imagine and inhabit in a deeply material, physical way. She created spaces of optimism, of color, of sensuousness, and felt tactility, a way for us to grapple with time, loss, and climate change, and the impact of capitalism on nature. Last spring, I wrote to Devra asking to buy her work. I was going through a divorce, and I wanted to fill my house with her art so that my small children would grow up with these pieces, beacons of atmospheric light and bodily sensation, even hope. I was writing to her to schedule a studio visit when I learned that she died. I know that Devra's loss has been felt on so many levels because she touched so many people's lives so very deeply. What Devra has given us is an unforgettable body of work that asks us to think deeply about experience, perception, and time, isolating bodily textures, colors, and sensations. It seems to me that we need this now more than ever as a way to come to terms with a world in crisis. So thank you, Devra, for what you have given us. This is from Debra. It gives me great joy to give another life to this sculpture and allow its pieces to go out into the world and proliferate as representatives of, them for, of their former selves. While I may have set up the conditions for the creation of these fragments, their individual forms transcend my own abilities through chaotic physical perfection. Spending time with each of these fragments, I have learned that sometimes the part is greater than the whole. There aren't any words that I can say to bring her back, um, but this is my attempt at an invocation. We should all realize and we need to realize that no matter how large and small, we all hold a fragment of her with us, carefully honed, polished, and given to us through the experience of knowing her. There wasn't a person with more positive and potential energy than Devra, which is why this is particularly painful. Every moment of every day, she was getting dirty, making something. Uh, making something thoughtful, something substantial, something that was meant to and going to outlast all of us. Knowing and being close to her was something that I share with all of you. Um, we collaborated on a lot of projects. Um, we put together the show for which uh, produced these fragments out of the pieces of Fluorescent Sunrise at Socrates. And she was gonna be one of the first artists at, a, at uh, a farm residency that I was starting. Uh, we had really big plans and we were gonna build big things together. I always told her uh, that I read into her sculptures that they were self portraits, uh, a sun rising over a mountain 
and just like her gritty, dirty, firm, dependable, beaming, and radiant. And as a self-portrait, just like her, a star has an incredible attractive force. And we were all in the field of her gravity, pulling closer and closer to her orbit. And then the sun was suddenly gone. And it feels like without her, we might have all pulled separate ways, but many of us chose to form new gravitational fields between us and make our, our bonds stronger, the ones that we had. We could have tried to seek reasoning as to why these things happened the way they did. Rather, we took a lesson for who she was and how she embodied that into her work. We should all strive to be Deborah, a glowing light, a tectonic force, a sun, a mountain. You have a small fracture of that in you. That fragment of her will be with you forever, carefully honed and polished by Deborah's own hands. Hi, everybody. Hey, gang. That was really beautiful. Um, we just wanted to talk a little bit about Deborah. We we just made a little video of just our experience working with her at Spring Break Art Show, and um, yeah, it was kind of amazing. We just want to share a few words about you know how we got to meet her and the circumstances under which she and Hillary wholeheartedly threw themselves into our first kind of collaboration. Yeah, it was 2017 when we, um, we were planning the New York show and um, Material Girls had submitted an application and it was this amazing large scale sculpture and we're like, shit, we don't have enough space. So we had this new uh, um, program that we were launching, which was called Brooklyn Immersive for that year. And we were like, Material Girls, we're gonna give you all this space. We're gonna, you know, we're just, we're gonna push you to May. But there's no way we, you know, we don't have the space in spring break in the New York show. And we just March. kind of, we were continuing the plan. We, I think we were so close to installation and we couldn't get Material Girls out of our minds. We we're just like, what is this? What, they keep coming, I'm dreaming about them. And so we contacted uh, everyone and um, Hillary and Deborah were like, let's do it. Like, we were like, we have this weird space, you have, this, you have sculptures, and they were like, we can figure it out. Um, so that was our first experience working with um, Deborah and Hillary specifically. And, um, and then from there, we um, did several collaborations with, um, Material Girls and uh, getting to know um, the spirit behind Debra and um, it's everyone that we work with, we believe in so much. Um, and it's an honor always to work with these curators and these artists. And Debra just kept um, the spirit really, really alive for us. Uh, and we feel a little robbed that we don't get to continue to collaborate. Um, our final collaboration with uh, Deborah and Grace Lee was eventual artifact in Times Square. And, um, so, you know, it's like all the elements for, for them. Um, you know, hearing with, Socr with um, Socrates Sculpture Park having to do with the heat, yeah. with Times Square was dealing with a winter blizzard all night and you know the spirit was just so good everyone's like we're gonna do it we can do this and that was kind of um always inspiring to us yeah so we wrote something but I, I think we just wanted to share how we sort of just our takeaway of how we first met and just how spunky vibrant ever ready Deborah always was as you all know um but we love her and yeah. we miss her and we have this video, I think, that will just show a couple of things and hopefully capture some spirit, too. Yeah. 
Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jonah, I'm one of Diver's brothers, this is Adam. Uh, I wanted to share something that uh, through the relationships that Deborah had forged in her, uh, throughout her art career, one of the things that sort of happened organically uh, and has been sort of evidenced sort of throughout this for the last hour or so uh, is her love for not just creating art, but creating music um, and the joy that uh, sharing musical experiences and creating music uh, and harmonizing uh, brought her. And what I, what I don't think that everybody knows is that uh, unlike her inspiration for her art, which, you know, my, my, we're not exactly sure, my, my parents, my brother and I were not exactly sure like where, where this all came from. Um, she figured it out and she owned it, but you know, this wasn't something that she was doing, you know, as a, as a child. Uh, but from a young age, she was really exposed to music and beautiful music and encouraged, uh, particularly by our father, who um, is a brilliant musician and uh, has a beautiful voice that he shared with Deborah. Um, I think she learned from him not only the importance of pursuing your creative interests, but to share those with people and to make sure that uh, your gifts are everybody's to you know enjoy. And one of the things that I know brought my father great joy uh, was there's a, there's a song that, uh, that is sung uh, as, a, as a remembrance in uh, Jewish tradition uh, to um, sort of mark the significance of people who uh, are no longer sort of physically with us, but whose memories we carry with us and uh, it's a song called Yesh Kochavim, and uh, 
over a course of you know 10 or so years when Deborah really found her voice um she and my dad would would perform this song together at meaningful um sort of cyclical events throughout the year um and so i want to share a quick clip of my father and his musical partner jeff um at a choral festival, which is something that my father sort of participates in every year, uh, singing, singing a part of this song. And while Deborah isn't in it, uh, he did make her. And um, <laughs> uh, if you watch closely enough, his posture and sort of just like everything <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there. So, um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> Kohabi. version of Devra uh, like 13 years ago uh, and um, it's really smooth transition from that to uh, wanting to um, just let you all know you know I can only see a few screens at once and who's here but uh, just how much love this fills me with and uh, one of the things that Devra did as well as anybody um, was connect people. And uh, we want to take a little bit of a break um, for a few minutes, but um, actually break into some breakout rooms uh, randomly assigned um, so that we can just like connect for a few minutes and like share some stories and share some Dever memories and cheers to some orange wine. Um, and then we'll come back together and we'll, um, we'll hear some, from some more people, but lots of love to everybody. <laughs>
um, the last month we were there, we kind of, we did our dream, which is our dream for the future, which is we cleared everything out and we kind of made it into a gallery space. And so, Okay. Yeah. I, wow. I was just telling the breakout room about the bird that is now my roommate and how I have now joined this parakeet, aka Glooms. Um, it's it's really he's he's a really inspiring little budgie. Uh, 
Wow, I hope everyone had a really good time. And I, or, I, it, there's, there's an interesting way that we can connect when we have these opportunities to have uh, more one-on-one -on -one experiences with people. And that was really, uh, it's really nice to just kind of meet a few folks. I definitely met someone. I met a few people that I hadn't met before. So that was really nice. Um, I'm kind of, I'm talking right now as we kind of bring things together for one, one last uh, collection of presenters. Do you hear that? Do you hear the bird chirping? Chirpus, chirpus, chirp for me. Yes, chirp again. Uh, chirpus Maximus, AKA uh, Chirpus Tweetus, uh, the, the chirp. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep this brief. Oh yeah, this, how, how is everyone's wine going? Everyone has, like a, uh, everyone has a funky, or some people have some, some funky orange wine, I hope. Uh, one story that I was gonna say about, about orange wine is, is that Dever and I went uh, to a wine shop uh, in my old neighborhood in Red Hook, and I distinctly remember a conversation where this employee, like we were like, we want the funkiest stuff you've got. And this employee was like looking at us and, and she was like, you mean like pond water funky? Like, like wringing out a sock funky? And like Deborah's face was just like, she like, it, she was elated. She was like, yes, that's the one. Wringing out the sock funky. And we got this amazing bottle. Um, so anyway, it's all to say that I hope you're enjoying uh, uh, something that you're sipping on, if it's a Croy or, or, or a glass of glass of wine or whatever and the last thing i want to also do is just thank uh you know i mean there's there's so many people to thank everyone that's presented and everyone that's made this thing possible and specifically the material girls for spearheading this idea of doing this zoom memorial um and uh at that uh i also want to say that i love you all for being here and it means a lot to me and to everyone involved and our next presenter is going to be jana labraska and I'm going to hand it to her. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you, Matt. And thank all you guys for being here, still being here. Um, uh, I'm Jana. I'm a kind of newer friend of Deborah's. Um, we were living together in 2018 and 2019 um, when I was starting my art history PhD. Um, and the Material Girls listed my contribution for tonight as a proposition. Um, which I really liked. So um, just hold that in your mind. And I'm going to read something and show some slides. Um, so of course, those of us presenting in this program represent just a small fraction of all that we collectively have to share and contribute um, to fostering and holding Deborah's memory close. A friend recently told me that one of her strategies for dealing with grief is to imagine, really visualize in detail, a place where the person you miss would be happy. This reminds me of the concept of a memory palace, a method for training the memory, which dates, dates back to ancient times. The idea is, built, is to build a physical structure in the landscape of your mind in which to store what you want to remember, placing each element in a specific location. Just opening up my slides here. Perhaps there is a text, a meme, a link, a song, an album, a work of art that you came across in the last year that you really wanted to share with Deborah, or something that you had the chance to share with her or she shared with you. For example, I thought of her immediately when someone sent me this story about glacier mice, and something tells me she'd be harmonizing all over the new Heim album. And something like a library or a memory palace, Material Girls and Friends want to capture this energy rather than let it dissipate so that we can collectively build a structure, both virtual and actual, between past and future for these offerings to her and to each other. Throughout the remainder of this program and beyond, we invite everyone to use the Google form we provided and the collaborative Spotify playlist DJ Kitty Pizza Meow to submit contact, uh, content for the eventual creation of a Deborah Freelander library, which will be an ongoing project. Here are a few things that I want to leave at the threshold of this new edifice. Last summer, I imagined wildly that there could be some way to read and write my way out of or into the, law, the lifelong project of holding Deborah, 
now so far away in the space of my being. I photographed her bookshelves. I looked through her books, seeing how closely she read them, inwardly repeating Donna Haraway's title, prominent to me on Deborah's shelf, trying to teach myself to stay with the trouble. On July 2nd, 2019, I wrote this in my journal, still unable to refer to her in the past tense. She is a ball of light. She is a little planet with a gravitational field all her own. How this loss is a vacuum, a void with its own gravitational field, swirling thought, love, and language into its singularity, the singularity of her and of love itself. A sense of futurity and forward momentum permeates her being utterly, so full of life that it seems impossible that she could be gone. Where are you now, Dev? What was it last night about how now you are topping the planet? By plunging into the Earth's crust, you became an earthwork. You already were an earthwork, a literal rock star. I recently and ran across what felt like a relevant passage, and it was echoed in the clip of Danny singing that, that Jonah shared, which I love. Um, but this is from uh, George Kubler's The Shape of Time, Remarks on the History of Things. And he writes, uh, he writes that astronomers and historians of art share a few things in common. Astronomers only look at old light. There is no other light for them to look at. This old light of dead or distant stars was emitted long ago and reaches us only in the present. However fragmentary its condition, any work of art is actually a portion of arrested happening or an emanation of past time. It is a graph of an activity now stilled, but a graph made visible like an astronomical body by a light that originated with the activity. Astronomers and historians, Kubler imagined, portray time at different scales in order to better understand its layers and shapes. The artist Nancy Holt, who Deborah and I both called Grandma, uh, wrote this about time for her husband Robert Smithson, following his tragic accidental death in 1973. For the time being, in the interim, in the course of time, from day to day, from hour to hour, until in due time, and in the fullness of time, time endures, goes on, remains, persists, lasts, goes by, elapses, passes, flows, rolls on, flies, slips, slides, and glides, glides by. I once interviewed the poet Ann, Ann Waldman, who introduced me to the concept of a 100-year project, the idea that one's vision should always exceed the scale of a single human lifetime, that it should take up the space of at least a century. In this last year, I found it helpful to revisit my own copy of Judith Butler's Precarious Life and look for passages that had moved me in the past. Let us return to the issue of grief, she writes, to the moments in which one undergoes something outside oneself and finds that one is one, beside oneself, not at one with oneself. For Butler, grief does not dispute the fact of autonomy, but it does qualify the ways in which we are from the start and by virtue of being a bodily being already given over beyond ourselves, implicated in lives that are not our own. What allows us to encounter one another what are the conditions of possibility for an international feminist coalition? These topographies have shifted, and what was once thought of as a border, that which delimits and bounds, is a highly populated site. You are what I gain through this disorientation and loss. This is how the human comes into being, again and again, as that which we have yet to know. I'll end with an image that gave me some comfort last summer drawn from a work of electronic theater by the artist Gretchen Bender. In the piece, Bender blends an enormous array of moving imagery to form an operatic televisual installation. At the end, she includes footage of fireworks exploding, but they play in reverse. This strikes me as a feminist image, a radical knitting together of something that is made to be blown apart. Instead of blooming outward as they do in life, Bender's fireworks frictionlessly draw in and in again, energy and matter coalescing in a loop like a giant perpetual inhale. I like to think of Deborah's memory palace as a firework in reverse, a force for pulling together all of the luminous fragments that she left with us. Thank you.
But you gotta unmute. You're on mute. You didn't share your computer audio. Hi, my name is Eliza Bag. Uh, I write music under the name Liesel. Um, I first met Devra through my dear friend Matt Evans um, when they started dating. Um, and it was just such a pleasure and a joy to, to get to know her through him and, um, and to see them together um, d during that time. Uh, and then Devra and I ended up working together very intimately uh, on a series of videos that she made for an album of mine. Uh, and it was just an amazing process because she made these incredibly detailed bit videos using her sculptures. Um, and she was just listening to all of my songs so, so specifically and with such care and thoughtfulness and nuance um, that all the videos she made line up exactly with my songs. Um, and it just it just displayed such a such a level of care and listening um, that I, I just remember being completely shocked. I, I sort of thought that she was going to make these videos that were going to look nice in the background of my my songs, but instead they I really felt like it was this very deep um, and and like substantive collaboration between the the visuals and the music and how they ended up coming together and. It ended up being a huge part of my album and the whole world that it that it created. And I still perform live. Um, I project the videos behind me as I perform, and they create this beautiful, entrancing, specific landscape that is just so Devra. I mean, it just looks so much like her and her art, and it's it's really her world um, that I feel like I get to sort of still be a part of, which which is an amazing thing that it, it, I still get to carry it with me and and like you know, literally sort of physically be in, in her world um, when I perform, which is which is an amazing treat. Um, this, this video that she made for one of my songs called Bloodletting, um, the reason I, I want to share it with you is because she texted me specifically uh, about this video, just saying that she, she, she struggled with it, with finding the right thing for it, because she just kept listening to the song over and over again. Um, and that it was just, she texted me something really sweet, like, you know, good work, BB. Like this is, this one's really good. And, and that's when she, when she finally arrived at the, the right thing for the video, that it, it was like a really profound moment. Um, and it's, it's, it's probably my favorite video for that reason. I think it's just so beautiful what she, what she did. Um, so thank you.
Hello, do I speak? Yep, Amy, okay. you here? Sorry, yes, I'm here. Um, hi, everyone. Do I, am I showing up on the screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, Damien. <laughs> hey, everyone. So me and Damien decided to do this uh, together. Um, me and Damien both met Dever on the same day while on an art residency at LMCC, which is the Lower Manhattan Cultural Center, located in the Financial District in Manhattan. We were there for uh, seven months together, and the three of us kind of became the people that were there all the time, every day, and I was her studio neighbor, and we all just kind of grouped together and became this like super support system for each other, um, a support system that we could go to each other's studios, um, take breaks, talk about bad studio visits, good studio visits, go to the Shake Shack together. Um, it was kind of a wild ride because we were in this high-rise building um, surrounded by um, all these other high-rise buildings, watching the sunsets bounce off the windows, um, getting to experience Debra and meeting her was probably, you know, she's become one of the best friends. Um, during that time, um, we would do crazy trips to Home Depot, have to ratchet, you know, 10 four by eight pieces of plywood to the roof, um, learning how to use ratchet straps properly, um, like doing kind of the craziest things and, um, really being there for each other. She's bailed me out many times in life and um, doing also the Socrates Sculpture Park at the same time was uh, really magical that we got to experience that together. We both met our partners during that same time and discussed how uh, we couldn't believe like a month ago, we were crying about how we didn't have anyone in our life. And then we both were talking about how magical it was that we're doing a piece at Socrates and also are dating someone. So, you know, Matt, you know, Matt, we both have sort of a close anniversary. So that was really special to share. And um, I want Damien to take over because I don't want to take up all the time, but um, yeah, she was someone that um, truly was there and a great friend and always showed up and that community will never be forgotten. Yeah, I, I'll let you take over. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, for me, uh, like a lot of other people who maybe grow up more cynical than they probably should, I had a hard time believing that there yeah. could be like a single person. Yeah. With so much light and openness and, and love. And I remember seeing the two of you. Amy and, and Deborah in the corner and thinking like, who are these two? I need to know more about them. And we kind of became thick as thieves very quickly um, and very intensely mm -hmm. uh, early on. And we spent a lot of late nights in the studio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Getting like crazy. Are you gonna show that video now? Yeah. <laughs> Probably a little choppy, but... <laughs> yeah, we made all sorts of crazy videos and... Um... We made a lot of different um, sort of videos and, you know, the thing for me um, when meeting Deborah, I'm trying really hard to hold it together, is just the amount of sort of professionalism and commitment to community. It's a thing that I had never really seen from someone so young as someone who quit art for a long time and came back around to see someone that dedicated to what they were doing was really inspiring for me. And the three of us being able to lean on each other constantly um, and to find communion and support and care and um, love, it's, it's not a thing that I've experienced often in my life. Uh, this piece is really a testament to that. Uh, it's something that the three of us made together. One late night in the studio, maybe Amy, you can talk a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of wild. You know, it's hard to collaborate. It's not an easy thing to do. And you know, a lot of people ask, will you collaborate? 
and you're just like, I don't know what's going to happen if we try. But one late night in the studio, I mean, maybe we were under some influences at the time, but we're all like sitting on my floor in the studio or weird carpet floors. And we're like, let's collaborate. And we're all like, yes. And then I was like, well, I have these legs that I've been wanting to do something with, like these weird leg cutouts. And we sat them down. I'm like, well, they're kind of like mountains. And then Deborah's like, yeah, let me go grab this like pink disc. And we stuck it between the legs. And then Damien's like, let me grab a piece of hardware. And we literally, I think, made this piece that night. Yeah. I mean, we might have refined it. We've made an edition of them and we made a larger edition that actually was because of Deborah in a Netflix original show, um, which, what's the name of it? <laughs> Natasha Leone. Which Russian I, Doll. Yeah, Russian Doll, which we never saw it in the show, <laughs> I don't think. No. But I mean, this piece is literally me, Damien, and Deborah's time at in the financial district looking through these windows, this sunset. It's also like sexuality and like the hardware, just everything came together and represents all three of our practices, which I think is a really hard collaboration to do. And we, I feel like we really just nailed it and it happened so instantly and quickly. I think that's what happens when you really know each other and you know each other's art practices and you just are so interconnected. Yeah, and I think that that's a big part of what sort of drew us together is we very quickly just developed such a deep understanding and respect for each other's practices. Mm -hmm. And the level of um, support and care that we gave to each other was something that I, I still sort of search for, honestly in relationships with other artists and with just people in general. I don't think I've ever met another person who's um, so kind and so generous with um, their thoughts and their feelings and their time. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I can't really imagine my time at LMCC um, being as incredible yeah. as it was without Deborah being there. Um, and this is a picture of pretty much all the LMC seers that we were pretty a lot of them that we were close with um, at Damien's uh, exhibition. If you want to talk about it, Damien, it was kind of a magical night. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just something at um, at MoMA. You know, I, I definitely want to keep the energy on on Devra and just thinking about all the ways in which she supported everything that I was doing and just mm -hmm. thinking about her and how prolific her career was in such a short amount of time. Um, well, we were all hitting these sort of like milestones in our careers, you know, together, which is really yeah. exciting and scary and challenging. And Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, the, the thing that really sort of hit me with her is just the level of commitment to the work. Um, it's a thing that I sort of aspire to, and it's the thing that sort of rings in my head uh, when I reach these moments where it's kind of difficult to press on. Mm -hmm. uh, last summer in June, I had a show that was a few weeks away from opening at the Sugar Hill Children's Museum. And the show was essentially designed to be a memorial for the 10th anniversary of my brother's passing in July of 2009. Um, so for two weeks before the show opens to have what I essentially considered a sister, um, to lose someone like that, it was a really devastating thing. Mm -hmm. The challenge was sort of thinking, you know, how would I be able to sort of honor her in such a short amount of time? And then it just became, it went back to doing what Deborah would do, which was put it into the work, you know? And so I made this piece um, in honor of her. It's like 
in the background right now, but for anyone who's sort of felt like, especially when it comes to art, when it comes to, because this thing is not an easy thing and Endeavor was really good at making it look super easy, but um, it's hard and knowing someone like that who was able to put so much energy into what they were doing, who was able to keep pressing forward, um, it's really one of the biggest things we can take away from her life. So I'm just really honored to, uh, I, I'm not gonna speak for you, Amy, but I'm pretty sure you agree, but I'm just really honored to have someone like that be a part of my life. And, you know, I started teaching sculpture as like a full-time faculty member this year. And I get a particular joy in making sure that Devra is one of the sculptors that I introduce freshmen to every semester. Oh, that's really, amazing. Yeah, I really enjoy, you know, people's first introduction to sculpture being her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we love you, Devra. Thank you everyone else for all the things you've said too, because it's really amazing to see all the different facets of her life that I maybe didn't get to know um, for only knowing her for a few short years, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, can you see me? <laughs> yes. No, maybe, hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, hi, I'm Yael, this is Jacob. <laughs> um, I grew up with Devra in Ridgewood. Uh, we met in middle school as small babies. Um, I'm completely overwhelmed by this and so um, happy to hear from everyone and just another beautiful reminder as it's been a very like, overwhelming love and pain and love and pain kind of year. Um, just uh, how fluorescent, as everyone has said, like her light is and how it's just so um, constant and present and um, in us. Uh, I am gonna speak for a short amount of time and then sh uh, show a video. Um, so I just wanted to just talk about how fun Devra is, because I think we all, like, I, it seems like a word you kind of throw away, like fun, but like it's such a like, I don't know, because it's so joy and stupid and silly and uh, she was all of that. And I think anyone who got to just like hang out with her, um, which like now in this time when we're not allowed to really have that kind of open space of hanging out where, um, even in the phrase, like anything can happen, possibilities can happen. And when you were with Deborah hanging out, it was it was that there was like a uh, a yes and of life, a yes and of everything, and um, it meant that anything could happen. Um, so uh, one day um, we were at my house, and I think we were freshmen in high school. And um, Debra was really good at GarageBand. I think that's like right when GarageBand was becoming a thing. And of course she was like amazing at it. Like, so we decided to write a song um, and she is completely responsible for all the beats and the tracks. And you'll see there's a lot of like incredible stuff. Um, we wrote the lyrics together. Uh, she, I am like quietly singing because I was too shy and she is good enough to harmonize. So she's beautifully harmonizing with herself and me whispering. Um, and, uh, I just, I'm so excited to share it with you guys and for you to, um, cause I'm sure you've all experienced this fun sing songy sort of like inventive brain that, uh, seemed to be able to like create magic, um, all the time. Uh, so without further ado, um, Sex with John Stamos, um, world premiere. <laughs> so Yael, I was, um, I was just thinking about John Stamos the other night. John Stamos? Like, Full House? Yeah, John Stamos, you know, like, John Stamos. <laughs> uh, John Stamos. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking about, um, how great would it be if you could have sex with John Stamos? 
I mean, I would. Me too. I totally would. Stamos has appeared in numerous made-for-television films, stage productions, television series, and commercials. Oh yeah, he had starring roles in the television series Thieves and Jake in Progress. Both shows ran for several episodes before cancellation. Oh, and in 2003, Stamos guest starred in Friends. <gasps> I love that I show! Know. But you know where his best performance was? In, in bed. bed! Sex with John John on Wikipedia. You mean, you mean I didn't just...
waiting for my favorite songs when they played i'd sing along it made me smile those were such happy times and not so long ago how i Yesterday once more So with that, one, that was a really wonderful video to end on. Thank you so much, Maggie Hazen and RISD Sculpture Crew. That was really just full of the joy and energy that I feel we all needed. Um, but from all of the MGs who are all unmuted and we'll jump in, thank you so much for being here. This was really, really special. And thank you so much for everyone who um, contributed and everyone who's been out there and watching and bringing all of the dev joy and love and energy into this experience it's really been so special and let's let's keep it going you know we have all of these wonderful ways to do that so we gotta yep. keep devs dev shining light out there yeah so please submit to the library if you have anything that you have wanted to share with devra um, thank you so much to Jana for really eloquently inviting everyone to do that. <sighs> thank you to Andrea Zlotowicz and to Caroline Casey and to Matt <laughs> and to Allison. Um, and Ben and Jana and Michael. Jana. Michael. Thank you to everybody for being on this call and being an amazing human and here with us this evening. It's been really special. And yeah. we really truly hope that this is just the first of, you know, a series of events that we can continue to honor and celebrate Devra. And we hope next time that we can all be in person and hug and touch and 
yeah. celebrate her together. We can have just like a giant karaoke dance party. <laughs> oh yeah, that was our dream. Yeah. A giant karaoke dance party. Hold your ho hold your rocks close with you mm -hmm. in the next year until that moment when we can all be together. Find your perfect rock, your perfect orange wine, and your stinky cheese. But I miss all of y'all. So now we're gonna go into just big group cacophonous zoom so get ready <laughs> awesome go. you're amazing thank you thank you everybody thank you thank you we all going to wow thanks to the chat the chat was super lit <laughs> that was fire! Also, download the playlist. Hang out. Do your dog, do your cat. We're doing yeah. songs on Steam Boost Trap. Oh my god. Thank you, Bio! You guys have to go in the chat. I'm not going to use the chat. I think that yeah, Al's video wins. Oh my god, it's adorable. You ever seen that before? I found that out. I think this song is It's like a crazy feedback nightmare. <laughs> of course. Oh, party. Wow. There's no more left. Oh no! <laughs> What a lovely crew, so great to spend the evening with all of you. My first breakout room. <laughs> I had my first breakout room. <laughs> I feel. I feel like this is the perfect energy. I just. Wait, where did Robbie and Ralph go? I just saw them. Uh, are we here? We are here. We are here. What's up, man? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and this is definitely the blue. Uh, the blue. Uh, 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 how do we find this guy? How do you view that? You can write and share who writes and share. It's nice to see. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 I don't know exactly how we got in the house. Yeah, I'm Oh my god, this is a beautiful thing that is happening. <laughs> Thanks for emptying math. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> this is amazing. You all are amazing. Yeah, this is just coming out of my eyes. <laughs> the entire thing is that.
this how people hang out nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what a party. It was really good. Yeah. I'm sort of there are never know. Never know. You just <laughs> I was really confused. I couldn't it. was like two minutes I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I'm not muted. Y'all, I'm going to make a Material Girls YouTube channel. Yeah. We heard about that. Right now. Because, wow. because Elise did a blood clean. So oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You yourself. When I wake up in the morning, I no, I love it. Wow. And the sunlight. You can place those flowers from me. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. 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 Is there a cat in a box over there? Yeah. Hi. He's been sitting in this box the entire time. That's amazing. Yeah. I know. Shade of rocks. You guys rock. That was amazing. Yeah. Wow. This, I love what's happening to the screen yeah, so it's much. It's getting better and better. It's insane. <laughs> Can I still, yeah, it's showing up even on mine. It's so crazy. Can you guys I don't think so. I don't think I, no. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't even listen to it. Does, does anybody else have a bird? No, that was Lyric! That was Lyric! Oh. <laughs> I was like, is that a bird? Too abruptly! He sounds like different things sometimes. <laughs> fair. It's totally fair. Uh, wait, yeah, oh wait. Matt, I, I, I think I can do it. I can do it. I gotta like, um... Can you see a little blue? I gotta do... I gotta change my screen so that you don't have the backdrop though. Uh, I forget how to do that. Virtual background. Okay. We're going on the gloom trip. I have no idea what y'all can see though. Oh, gloom's being shy right now. Gloom. Purpose. I, I, oh. Bird in there. Purpose. Derpus McDerpus. <laughs> That's the best one. <sighs> he, he really only responds to like the sounds of other birds. Is <laughs> oh, 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 o
Just in general, like I want to text, I want a story, I want to. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, there's gonna be a lot more Zoom content like coming up. Like we're learning. Okay. Hi, I um, I had a one-on-one -on -one in my breakout room, and I can't. I we never got each other's names. <laughs> wow. Um, she went to camp with Deborah, and she told an amazing story, and I want to connect with her again. Anyone know <laughs> who she was? Uh, what does she look like? What a neat wow. I don't see her. <laughs> I don't see her right now, but I'll, I'll ask her. What did she look like? like? We went to camp with her. Okay. Maybe we know her. Who's talking? Um, I think she had, like, Red curly hair. I don't. <laughs> so, Rachel Eisenstadt or Sam Pankin? The th we did not exchange names. Short hair or long hair? <laughs> Lola or Allie? Allie Carrison? Not Allison. No. But I'm gonna. I'll ask Allison. She'll be able to tell me. Okay. Allie Robbie's thinking. cousin. <laughs> didn't get each <laughs> other. <laughs> How many how many people are still here? I love that people are still hanging out. Where are you seven? Yeah, I'm here for Should it. I start doing Zoom DJ sessions like more often? Yes, why are you guys I mean I got like okay. PayPal, Venmo and shit, like four point three. But we need the like share screen drawing. It's the most important part. <laughs> Wait, how do I find that? It disappeared from my screen. Territory now. Oh my god. Should I mute everyone else? Ah. I literally think that Tristan left at one point to do a sit. <laughs> Is there a way to get John Stamos and how do I talk about this video? <laughs> yeah, someone should send it to John. I mean, I live in LA. <laughs> yeah, wait, Kim, do you know, do you know, stars. Hey, yeah, do you live in LA? Yeah. Uh, I think you could have come to I know Shia. I know Shia. Oh, right. <laughs> so, wait, does John's name was also hang out at the Pornhub parties, or is like, what's the deal? Who's the other guy with Full House? Uh, the, uh, not Dave Coulier, the main one. Wait, what did you say? My, my friend was in a movie with Bob Saget. I'll ask him if he knows John Stamos. <laughs> Who? I think you need. What is that? Hey, Fred. Hey, are you here? I'm sure he's here. Oh, that's that's just the monitor. That's just the monitor, yeah. I want to drag a picture of John Oh, wait, no, we can do it here. Because this is the screen that's being shared. Oh, that is. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. My screen? Oh, my God. John Stamos, Beach Boys. If not, it's only sharing your Spotify. Oh, you're right. I can change that. Oh, I don't know how I'll change it. It's a bit Playing guitar right there, but in the video for Kokomon, <laughs> how do I share this quickly? Guys, I'm uploading the John Stamos video of the material girls channel, but with full credit to you know. Thank you, but. Um, it will be published to share. Very important. <laughs> Why does he play with the speakers? I don't know. <sighs> oh, this photo is so important to me. Thank you.
death right now. Oh yeah, do you have it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's a collaborative playlist, so it's fun that. You can have it. It should, yeah, I think anyone that doesn't. Or maybe I can send you a collaboration link. Oh no, I can add Okay, great. All right, how about, how, how does everyone feel about one more song? How are we doing? Yeah, do another song. How's it? One more song, Matt. Oh my God, oh. this is important. I don't know if this is the one, but no, it's not. It's oh, not yeah. this one. But this is a great song. Great song. Wait, how, is, is Toro too much? Or, oh, wait, hold on. It should be.
Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I'm going to go now. Thanks for listening. Hugs. Love you, Matt. Bye, friends. Thank you. Thank love you all so much. Everybody. I love you. I don't know how to leave. <laughs> love you. <laughs> bye. I'm also on this screen, I too. Love you all. Love you. Bye. 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 We love you.